Hello, this is Protagonist G, and welcome to This Week in NPML. You saying we some kind of suicide squad or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, the car! <laughs> oh, there he goes. I think he's gonna go boom boom, but boom boom no no. Before I get into anything that happened for week one, I'd like to introduce our 12 teams. Our first team is the Amsterdam Amphros. This team is represented by head coach MC, who is joining us for their second season in NPML. They have an overall record of 2-7 and seven and have an average placement of 8th. Our next team is the Edinburgh Eevees. Their head coach is Pillsbury, and she is also joining us for her second season in NPML. They currently have a 1-8 and eight overall record and has an average placement of 10th. Next, we have the Glasgow Gastros. Their head coach is Slosh, and he is joining us for his first season in NPML. Welcome. Our next team is the Hartford Whalmers. They are head coached by Rachi. Rachi is also joining us for his first time in NPML, so welcome, Rachi. Up next, we have the Hong Kong Haunters. The Haunters are head coached by Con Schmidt, another newcomer joining us this season in NPML. Welcome. Next up, we have the Jersey City Jirachis. They are head coached by Nuke the Whales, and Nuke is also joining us for his first season of NPML. Welcome, Nuke. Next on the list, we have the defending champions, the Miami Melodics. Their head coach is King Piccolo, and he is one of the founding members in this league. So Miami will be joining us for their fourth overall season with an overall record of 16-5 and five and an average placement of second. The next team up is the Minot Magic Harps. They are coached by Swaguchi, and this is the Minot's first season in NPML as well. Welcome. The next team is the New Orleans Pelipers. They are coached by Beer Molossau from Osaka, Japan. Beer is also an originating member and is in his fourth season with NPML. He has an overall record of 7-13 and 13 with an average placement of 6th. Our next team is the Portland Polyworlds. They are head coached by Monk, and Portland is joining us for their second season. They have an overall record of 4-5 and five and an average placement of 4th. Our next team are the Phoenix Solar Rocks. They are head coached by Pied. The Solar Rocks are also a founding member of the league, and they are joining us for their fourth season. They have an overall record of 12-7, and seven, with an average placement of 4th. The last team is the Vancouver's Point. They are coached by the Fabulous Falcon, who is also an originating member. They are joining us for their 4th season of NPML. They have an overall record of 16-5, and five, with an average placement of 2nd. They are the only two-time champion, winning both Season 1 and Season 2. That is all 12 teams participating in NPML this season. I'd like to thank all teams for being here. I'd also like to wish all teams the best of luck in your battles this season. But most importantly, have fun. Let's start off our week's review with what type of activity we saw from our teams. Our first move to happen was from the defending champions, the Miami Melodics. We see them drop Porygon Z for Kiram. All around, this is a good pick for Miami as it's an increase of 125 total stats. It provides a strong, flexible, offensive presence. And Kiram has base stat of 130 attack and 130 special attack. So it'll be very interesting to see what head coach King Piccolo decides to do with Kiram for this season. All right, our next move comes from the Hartford Whalmers and head coach Rachi. They drop Zoroark and add Chandelure. If you look at Hartford's team, you'll see they have a pretty strong weakness to fighting. So I think it's a smart move to go into the portal and get a ghost type Pokemon, and especially one as good as Chandelure. I think it's a good idea to also to get Chandelure because of its fire typing is a great counter to any type of grass, you know, type Pokemon that we might see come up against a big star in Tyranitar and Excadrill. So I'm excited to see what Chandelure has to offer for this season. The Vancouver Spoink also decided to switch up things early and they drop Weezing for Honchkrow. The addition of Honchkrow gives head coach the Fabulous Falcon access to a decently large move pool spanning over different types. Things I expect to see are Sucker Punch, um, Brave Bird, and probably Tailwind on this. And then, you know, fourth mood ranging from Protect or maybe something that he just needs to, to counter some, you know, specific Pokemon. Um, the only real downside to this, this trade or this free agency pickup is that it just adds to the list of Pokemon that are just going to get destroyed by Ice types. Um, Fabus Falcon now showing he has five Pokemon that are at least two times weak to Ice. And I definitely think people are going to find that and take advantage of that. Our last team to make a change is the Phoenix Soul Rocks. They drop Venomoth and add Sigilith. Sigilith is also one of those Pokemon that has access to a large move pool that spans over multiple different types. I don't think we'll see Sigilith in every battle for the Phoenix Soul Rocks, but I do think that he is going to be a great counterplay Pokemon. I think we'll see him in type of situations where 
Pied might not have a, access to a certain type that he might need to, you know, maybe shut down someone's sweeper. So I think it'll provide a great option for him, and we'll, we'll see how it turns out during the season. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the games that happened in week one. Now, how this section is going to work is I'm going to do one big game of the week, and that'll be towards the end. And for all the other five games, I'm going to just give a quick overview of who won and probably the MVP of that game. So our first game was between the Miami Melodics and the Minot Magikarps. Miami ends up taking the W over Minot 2-0 behind the offensive power of Zapdos and Pinsir. Our MVP goes to Zapdos by racking up five kills and only being knocked out once. Our second game is between the Portland Polyworlds and the Phoenix Solrocks. These games pretty much came down to whoever can get their ace rolling first. Portland was sitting behind their ace in Garchomp, and Phoenix was sitting behind their ace in a beat-up, justified Terrakion. In the end, Garchomp was too much for Phoenix, and they were able to get the 2-1 win over Phoenix. Our MVP of the match goes to Garchomp for getting 7 kills and only going down once. Our next game is between the Amsterdam Amphros and the New Orleans Pelipers. New Orleans came out with probably one of the stalliest teams I have ever seen in NPML, with big tanks like Cresselia and Alola Mola. Unfortunately, Amsterdam isn't able to do much to either of those Pokemon, and New Orleans just pretty much stalls out for the win, and Alola Mola ends up getting 9 kills. That is right, Alola Mola got 9 kills. 5 direct and 4 through Toxic. So, Alola Mola, without a doubt, is our MVP. Our next game was played between the Glasgow Gastros and the Hartford Whalmers. This was the only game of the week where both players were newcomers to NPML. These games were close, but Hartford's fighting weakness proved too strong, and Conkelder was able to rack up kills and damage with Mock Punch. Glasgow takes the 2 1 win over Hartford, and the MVP of the game has to go to Conkelder, getting 6 kills and doing massive damage. Our last game before the game of the week was between the Edinburgh Eevees and the Hong Kong Haunters. Edinburgh came out with a full rain team, but it wasn't enough as Hong Kong had both Raichu and Rotom Fan to pack a major punch into this practically all-water team. Hong Kong ends up picking up the win 2-0, and Rotom Fan floats away with the MVP win for this match as it picked up 6 kills and was not knocked out once. Now the moment everyone's been waiting for, the game of the week. This was an incredible game played between two very strong opponents, one an NPML veteran and two-time champion, the Vancouver Spoink, and the other is a feared newcomer, the Jersey City Jiratsis. Let's go ahead and get into game one. So for game one, we see Vancouver lead with Tornadus and Rotom Wash, while Jersey City leaves with a Fortress and a Suicune. We then see Jersey City decide to withdraw the Suicune after seeing a Thunder Wave bounce off its Protect. Jersey City decides to switch into Nido King, which immediately gets hit by an Acrobatics from Tornadus, picking up the one hit knockout or Oko. Jersey City then brings in Amoongus to use Rage Powder and guarantee a free Trick Room. However, the Amoongus gets Okoed by the Tornadus, and so when the Rotom Wash hits Reuniclus with a Thunder Wave, he hits a full para and prevents the Trick Room from being able to get off this turn. Reuniclus is able to get the Trick Room off next turn, however. Vancouver sends in Honchcrow, which gets chunked by the Stealth Rocks, but the next turn hits a Sucker Punch to Oko Jersey City's Reuniclus. Jersey City then sends in Heatran, who uses Heat Wave to confirm the kill on Honchcrow, but doesn't do anything to the Rotom Wash thanks to Protect. Next turn, a Thunderbolt from Rotom Wash kills Suicune, forcing Jersey City to its last member, a 35 HP Fortress. Vancouver then sends in Flygon to pick up the double knockout Earthquake onto the Heatran and Fortress to take the game one win with five Pokemon still alive. Moving on to game two. Now we see in game two that Jersey City decides to switch up their lead and go with the Heatran and Reuniclus, while Vancouver stays true to his leads from last game of Rotom Wash and Tornadus. The Tornado shows us why he is a third round pick and uses his Prankster ability to be able to use a Taunt, which prevents the Reuniclus from using Trick Room slash any status moves for three turns. We then see the Heatran use Solar Beam with a Power Herb to prevent the turn of charging and to do 89% to the Rotom Wash, but the Rotom eats a Citrus Berry to bring it back to 36% health. Jersey City then withdraws Heatran for Amoongus. After the switch, Tornadus does a huge chunk of damage to the Reuniclus, but it isn't enough for the Oko and the Reuniclus Focus Blast into the Rotom Wash for the first knockout of the game. Vancouver then brings in Hotchcrow and uses Sucker Punch to confirm the knockout on Reuniclus. After that, Jersey City will bring in the Suicune and swap out the Among Us for Fortress, expecting that Vancouver will use Acrobatics. 
which he does, and the Fortress tanks it a lot better than the Among Us could have. After a couple of turns of trading blows and setting up Stealth Rocks for Jersey City and Tailwind for Vancouver, we have the Fortress and Suicune versus the Tornadoes and Metagross. Suicune goes for Scald on the Metagross and gets the 30% burn, which not only hurts the Pokemon every turn, but it also brings its attack down to half, which is huge for a strong physical attacker like Metagross. We then see Metagross use Meteor Mash into Suicune. I think Jersey City was expecting an Earthquake or something to go into Fortress because we see it use Counter, but it fails since nothing hits it. After two turns of not much happening, we are left with Flygon and Metagross on Vancouver's side, and Among Us and a 6 HP Suicune for Jersey City. Metagross confirms the knockout onto Suicune with Earthquake, but it costs Vancouver because the Among Us is able to get off a Spore that puts Flygon to sleep. Jersey City sends out Nidoking to steal the knockout from Suicune by Thunderbolting Metagross that would have died to burn. We will now call all kill stealing as the king. Among Us hits a fat suck with Giga Drain on a Flygon. Vancouver sends in Mian Shao to replace Metagross and swaps out Flygon for Tornadus, which immediately eats a crit hit Focus Blast from the King, making it go down immediately. Vancouver sends in an already hurt Honchkrow and the Stealth Rocks takes it down to 5 HP. However, it is able to outspeed and pick up the knockout onto Nidoking, King, but kills itself from recoil in the process. Vancouver replaces Honchkrow again with Mian Shao, and Jersey City replaces Nidoking King with Among Us. Mian Chao almost picks a knockout on a fortress with a drain punch, but the fortress hangs on. Next, Amoongus goes and is able to pick up the knockout on Flygon with the Giga Drain, leaving Mian Chao in a 1v3. Can he do it? Probably not, since he takes a huge hit from Fortress's counter. Mian Chao is able to pick up the knockout on Fortress before being put to sleep and then killed by another Giga Drain from Amoongus. With that, Jersey City picks up its first game win in MPML and forces a decisive game 3. To start off Game 3, Vancouver decides to stay with its old faithful lead of Tornadus and Rotom Wash, while Jersey City goes back to its Game 1 leads of Fortress and Suicune. We see a Turn 1 Taunt come from Tornadus to prevent the Fortress from setting up, but Fortress was carrying a Mental Herb causing the Taunt to end immediately, and the Stealth Rocks get set up. After a turn of some switching and some light damage onto Suicune, we see the Tornadus fall to a critical hit from a Scald, and Jersey City takes a one Pokemon lead three turns in. Next turn, we see the Revenge Knockout coming from the Brave Bird from Honchkrow, also scoring a critical hit. Jumping forward to turn seven, we see Nidoking behind a sub with the Reuniclus to its side, staring down a full HP Metagross and Flygon. From behind the sub, Nidoking hits a massive Earth Power, knocking out the Metagross. Vancouver sends in Miesha, threatening a fake out hit into Reuniclus. However, Jersey City does see the threat and protects. Vancouver tries to U-turn to get some good damage and switch out to keep the Fake Outer alive, but the U-turn fails due to Protect, preventing the Mian Shao from being able to switch out, and he takes a fatal blow from Thunderbolt from a sub Nidoking. It takes two Earthquakes from Flygon to break the substitute of Nidoking and then pick up the knockout, but Nidoking is able to cause a massive amount of damage in those two turns. Right after that, the Honchkrow finishes off Fortress with the Superpower. This brings the Pokemon count to even, but the combined health is 291 for Jersey City and Vancouver only with 111, so it will be a struggle for Vancouver to pull this back. Jersey City decides to bring out Reuniclus and Among Us. Flygon faints into a protected Reuniclus and Honchkrow lands the Yoko from Brave Bird, but it takes his own life in the process. And now it comes down to the final two Pokemon for both teams. For Jersey City, a Heatran and Reuniclus, basically both at full HP, versus a Rotom Wash and a Flygon from Vancouver, who are both sharing a combined HP of 94. Flygon hits a feint onto Heatran, and then Rotom outspeeds the Heatran and goes for a Hydro Pump, but it misses. I'll be honest, I think it would have needed a crit to kill, but still. Heatran lets out a brutal heat wave, knocking out Flygon and bringing Rotom Wash down to 59 HP after a berry, and landing the burn. Reuniclus sets up Trick Room, pretty much guaranteeing the win as Heatran uses his Power Herb Solar Beam to finish off the Rotom Wash and win the set. I'd like to congratulate Jersey City on winning their first match in NPML and doing so over a very strong opponent in Vancouver. And that's all that happened this week in NPML. I'm your host, the protagonist G. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.